Okay, now that we had a look at the motion equations and how acceleration affects final velocity and the time it takes to reach that final velocity and the works like that, we are ready to go and look at the most a common application of acceleration and that is gravitational acceleration. Now if there's one thing that I know you know that is that if you jump off a ledge here you are and you are about to jump off a ledge you are going to fall to earth. Okay, let's say it's a very very short ledge but you are definitely going to fall to earth. You know that but why is that true? Well, it's actually quite simple and even though a little bit mysterious and that is that any two objects will attract each other with a force that is proportional to the mass of those two objects. Now since Earth is such a big mass, the force wherewith it attracts objects near its surface is so large that we can actually observe the acceleration that it causes quite clearly. And that is why when you jump off a ledge you will actually be attracted to the earth. Now the next question is why is it more dangerous to jump from a higher ledge? Okay, Let's say you are jumping now off of a building. Okay. Here you are only jumping off a step and you don't get hurt, hopefully not. Okay, But what if you were to jump off a building? You might just break yourself in half. Well, the main reason for that is that when you reach the ground jumping off from a small step, you are not traveling that fast. But when you reach the ground, if you've jumped from a very high ledge, you are actually traveling at a much faster speed. And that is what's going to kill you. Now this difference in velocity can be accredited to gravitational acceleration. You are accelerating the longer you fall, the faster you fall. And I think intuitively you know this. That when you fall, the longer you fall, the faster you fall. Now gravitational acceleration is actually a constant and we use a small g, g, that's the gravitational acceleration and its value is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now what that means is that for every second that an object is falling, it is falling at 9.8 meters per second faster. So if I drop an object and it starts, its initial velocity is zero, after one second its initial velocity will be 9.8 meters per second faster. After another second it will be another 9.8 meters per second faster. So after two seconds the velocity will be 19.6 meters per second and so forth. So as you can see as time goes by velocity is increasing. Obviously there will come a time when you are falling so fast that the drag, that's the wind resistance, will start countering the acceleration that you are experiencing but uh, for the purpose of this course it is sufficient for you to take this as a constant that gravity is 9.8 meters per second. Now if we go have a look at our motion equations then you will notice that in every equation we always have four parameters. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so forth. Okay, And that means that if I want to calculate one of the four I need the other three. So that I can substitute into my equation. Okay, so if I need in these, we have one, two, delta t and a. We have four. If I want to calculate delta t, for example, I am going to need a, v i, and x. That means all I need is three of the parameters, 
and then I can use the equation that contains the fourth parameter so I have delta x vi and a and I want delta t so then I'm going to obviously use this equation once I have that I can just go use this equation to find delta t the other parameter okay so I have three parameters and then I can find the other parameter you'll also notice that in total we have five parameters we have acceleration we have future velocity we have initial velocity we have change in displacement and we have change in time now with all this in mind this is what we are going to use when we consider the application of gravitational acceleration and the only thing that we are going to do is we are going to now instead of a replace a with the gravitational constant which is 9.8 meters per second squared and remember that this is always downwards towards the earth the rest of the values can be given to us and as long as we have any two other values we can go and calculate any of the other unknown values